Nike Optic are a provider of night sight equipment uh, for a range of different defence applications, uh, including uh, predominantly on show here today, we're looking at the, the dismounted area, so dismounted combat. This is Merlin Long Range. Uh, this is an image intensified weapon sight. Um, so this is designed to fit in front of a telescopic day scope. Uh, and the Merlin Long Range gives the capability to see in very low light conditions under starlight or moonlight and to engage with a target out to about 3,000 metres. Now the inline capability uh, allows the user of the weapon to zero their day scope, so this is the normal scope they use in daytime conditions, uh, and then once that is zero to the weapon, you simply clip on the image intensifier in front of that day scope to provide the nighttime uh, capability. Uh, so that will allow you to engage with the target out to about 3,000 metres in, in very low light uh, situations. The Merlin family of sights is in a range, uh, so this is the long range unit. We also have a short range unit here, and as the size suggests and as the name suggests, this is for engaging with targets uh, closer to the weapons platform. So this will engage with targets out to about one and a half kilometres. Again, an image intensified site, so this allows you to engage with targets very, very low light. Uh, the system takes in the smallest amount of light, uh, multiplies it and then sends it out to the user's eye so you get a, an image that's uh, as, your, as your eye would normally see in visual conditions. So you're looking in the visible spectrum. The other way to see in the dark in zero light conditions is to look outside the visible spectrum, so to look in the thermal. And this here is Dragon Compact. Uh, this is a very small uh, thermal sight capability. This is designed to either be standalone or similar to the unit on the weapon stock here, it can stand in front of a day scope. Uh, this will look in that portion of the spectrum which can't be seen uh, by the naked eye uh, and you're then looking at the, the heat that's emitted from a body or, or from uh, a vehicle or any heat source at all. The benefit of thermal is that you can see in absolutely zero light conditions. So you don't need any starlight, any moonlight at all and you're able to see also signatures. So not only a body that's emitting heat but you'll be able to see footsteps or handprints where somebody has been previously. Now the difference between the thermal and the image intensified is you have a higher contrast with the thermal too. So that means you get a very good idea of where a target is, but you don't necessarily get to see a lot of the detail that you can see in the visible spectrum. So we're actually working also on a range of fused sites, which takes the benefit of thermal and the benefit of image intensified and you can overlay it and have a combined picture. See a lot of detail, but you actually get really good target recognition at a long distance. If I show this final unit as well, this is a small monocle and this gives an idea of how small you can actually make a unit. So this is an image intensifier. Uh, this is designed to be personally issued, so not fitted to a weapon, but this would be fitted in a pouch on the individual infantry person uh, and used at night. Again, because it's image intensified, you can see you can use it in daytime conditions using a filter uh, or at night you remove the filter and then you're looking uh, with all of the lens and you're getting the maximum light exposure you can. When you're on a weapon system, obviously uh, the weapon's being carried so uh, weight is always an issue, um, but the smaller units are, as I say, made to be uh, individually issued and the larger units are generally carried on, on a weapons platform. But any of these units, we know weight is an issue. We try to look to reduce the size and weight as much as possible uh, to reduce the burden on the actual soldier. We're also looking at a vast range of different sensor arrays that you look in all different parts of the spectrum to try and provide as much target uh, acquisition information as possible. We're also looking at overlaying information into the sites. So you can actually take data, provide it into the site and overlay that on your target image so you're providing more data uh, on the general uh, area of combat to the person that's uh, operating the weapon. Um, so as I say, size and weight is always an issue. Fusion is a big area we're looking at and just data acquisition in general and providing as much data as possible uh, to the person operating the weapon.